So Thailand was sixth in Southeast Asia for plastic waste leakage into the natural environment. So Thailand was sixth in the world for plastic waste leakage into the natural environment. So this is our first machine that we use, which is our shredder machine. Okay. Um, so it uses a big old mo motor here, which is attached to a drive shaft, um, and it drives these teeth inside the machine here. So once we've got the, uh, the flakes, so this is just a small example showing what the flakes look like. That's now ready to be fed into our melting machines to actually start making products. Okay. I'm your host, Fa Tira Kalsan, and welcome to Thailand Today. Recycling, reusing, and making the effort to help save our planet and mitigate the impacts of climate change is the way forward. That's why today we're here at Precious Plastic Bangkok, a community-based plastic recycling solution that creates products out of waste. Okay, to learn more, we're joined by Mr. Dominic Puwasawat Chakapong, the project director of Precious Plastic Bangkok. and thank you for having us. Let's talk a little bit about the concept behind uh, Precious Plastics. Can, but what is it? Can you tell us a little bit about it? So Precious Plastic Bangkok is a community-based organization that's trying to boost recycling efforts of plastic waste, but also help to reduce the amount of plastic waste that's actually being generated across society in Thailand. So we work with seven different communities now, all across Thailand, not just in Bangkok. We give them the tools, the machines and the training to understand how to recycle plastic and then to produce new products from that plastic waste and then actually sell those products as well. well how did the concept come about in the first place? Where did it originate from? So Precious Plastic is a concept that was born from the Netherlands um, by the designer Dave Hackens. Okay. So he wanted to come up with an open source method that anyone wherever they are in the world can engage in plastic waste reduction and plastic waste recycling. So he came up with a open source free resource pack that anyone can download. They can download the plans for the machines and then they can start building these machines themselves using everyday tools, metalworking workshops, and actually start engaging in this project themselves. So it originated in the <coughs> Netherlands, but basically it's open to anyone really who can, who, it's open to anyone to access sort of like a manual of how to carry out everything, right? Um, do you guys operate as a network as well or more like individually? It's a loose network. So okay. everyone works together for a unified cause for each of the chapters. So we are one chapter of this network. Okay. It's, we w operate independently. We can rely on resources from Precious Plastic Central, so from Dave's office, um, and so they regularly produce new updates from the machines, new blueprints that people can design. So the designs for the machines are constantly developing, evolving to meet new challenges in the plastic waste sphere. Um, and I think that's a really important development that keeps the whole project relevant. As new uh, challenges come up, new product designs come up, we as a chapter and we as a country can adapt our approach to deal with different types of plastic waste, new products that people want on the marketplace as well. So I think that's a really important concept. Let's talk a little bit about um, Thailand's plastic waste situation. Generally, like how is it currently um, Thailand as well as globally, you can compare the two. I think when we look at plastic waste generation in this region, not just in Thailand, we see that unfortunately the rate is increasing. So even before COVID, Thailand's waste, uh, waste creation was increasing by 12% each year. So it's a huge amount of volume that's being generated. Plastic per capita is also increasing. Um, and I think that COVID has really accelerated that unfortunately. We've seen that there's a new perception of single use plastic as being hygienic and free from contamination. So people are less likely to use recycled plastic. Right. We also see food courts not providing uh, reusable cutlery anymore. Um, hotels were requiring you to wear gloves when you go down to breakfast. Um, and I think that all of these new forms of single-use plastic that we didn't have to use before, they have proliferated across the region right. and across the globe. And we are seeing the results of that. When we do beach cleanups and um, community cleanups, it's masks it's personal protection of gear, PPE, that we're finding. All these gloves, all these masks that are used once or maybe for a few hours and then they're thrown away. 
And we also have all of these ATK tests as well, which we use for 30 seconds. Um, and we're having to use these every day now, whether, whether we go to school, whether we go to work, whether we go to university. And that waste is just building up. Mm -hmm. And there's nowhere for it to go but for the for landfills at this point. And so we want to step in with a solution. We can work with communities directly, give them the tools to recycle the plastic that they're lying on their doorstep, literally lying on their doorstep, and give them an opportunity to turn that into something new, something exciting, and something that they can actually gain real financial benefit from. Part of doing that, of course, like an important element is plastic waste separation. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how it actually impacts people's <coughs> lives generally? So people who watch can relate to this. With plastic waste uh, segregation and separation, it's a vital part of any recycling effort. There are many different types of plastic um, that we use in our everyday lives, from the PET bottles to the drink. So from the PET bottles that we use every day to the bo bottle caps that we use on top of the bottles to our takeaway food containers as well. All of these are different types of plastic and they need to be separated before they can be recycled because otherwise it contaminates supply, it makes it more expensive for big recyclers and community-based recyclers like us as well. So it's really important that people understand about separation but also for companies right. and also for conglomerates, but also for governments. So this is the separation of the plastic <coughs> itself, not even just the waste. It's about the different kind of materials of plastic, mm. right? Mm. Where is that being taught right now at this moment on how people can understand um, the different kinds of plastic and how to separate them? That's a really good question, because at the moment, I don't think there is that much awareness okay. about the need for separation and for segregation. Really, this kind of uh, information should be shared at the school level so for school children, they should be learning this mm -hmm. in, as part of their curriculum. And I think that's a really important lesson that we can learn. And we work with schools, we work with universities a lot. We do workshops with them, we teach them about the need for separation and segregation of waste. Not just plastics, mm -hmm. but all types of waste. So hopefully we can build better understanding, we can change people's perception of what plastic waste is okay. and what it an can actually become as well. And I think that can start at school. Now for Thailand, um, even though there's greater awareness about recycling, do you think that at this point Thailand is considered to be a recycling country? How would you reflect like Thailand society about this right now? I'd say that Thailand is still struggling okay. with understanding how to deal with the amount of waste that's being generated. How do we compare to other countries in the, in the region though? So Thailand was sixth in Southeast Asia for plastic waste leakage into the natural environment. Um, out. So Thailand was sixth in the world for plastic waste leakage into the natural environment. And that was a published uh, study several years ago. We're now number 10, but I wouldn't see that as a victory. For us to still be in the top 10 countries in the world for the amount of plastic waste that's leaking into the natural environment is not a stat that we should be proud of. I mean, I think like just you talking about the plastic segregation and separation, that's also, that's already surprising because every day when we go out, for example, we see signs of like recycle, recycle, but we don't even know about this element. That's a whole different element that there's not much awareness on it. You know, so that's definitely something that would be definitely helpful if the school started instilling this mm. into young, young children. <clears throat> what companies has Precious Plastic been working with in Bangkok to address <clears throat> these issues? So we've worked with a number of different partners um, from the corporate sector, but also civil society sector as well. Um, so we've worked a lot with Quali, um, so a very forward thinking design company that uses a lot of recycled plastic now in their content. So okay. from our bottle caps to PET bottles, to plastic bags, to even fishing nets, they accept all of this recycled material now and actually produce really nice, aesthetically pleasing household products. I've seen it. It's very creative. They mm. have them um, like you put keys in them and they yeah. pop out. It's very yeah. cute. Can you also give us examples? Aside from quality, are there other campaigns that are ongoing, for example, that are addressing these issues? So we work with other partners as well. So we work with Cyan Discovery and the Ecotopia Mall as well. So um, we sell our products there and we do workshops with them as well. Um, but there are a number of different um, other organizations like us that are working to develop new products. Um, and develop new collaborations so that we can work with them, we can build new ideas, we can build new ways of raising awareness about these issues. Um, so making skateboards, making uh, plant pots, making hanging baskets, making lampshades, all of these are new designs that we can develop and um, 
push into the market to show that there is a marketplace for recycled materials and they can make really nice products that are attractive and speak to this whole message as well. Okay, let's take a short break and we'll be back to look at some of these products as well as the recycling facilities here. of Thailand. And welcome back to Thailand today. Let's take a look now at the recycling facilities here at Precious Plastics Bangkok. Mr. Yeah. Dominic, please. Welcome. So this is our showcase workspace that we have here that provides a really unique perspective on what we can actually do with this technology. So we have all of our machines here. We also have some of our products on display. Um, and this operates as basically our hub for collecting the plastic waste in the first place. So we have some of the plastic waste here mm -hmm. that's already been sorted. Can you explain like what this is? Like I see yeah. they're all sorted in different colors. So these are all plastic bottle caps okay. that have been brought to us through our drop-off network, mm -hmm. but also through individuals sending the plastic to us in the post and dropping it off here at our workspace as well. So, so this, people can just mail them in? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Which is an incredible idea that people are so active and um, interested in this project that they're actually willing to post us plastic in the mail. Do you get a lot of mail? mail? We okay. do, Will yeah. You? So yeah. we have packages that stack up every month. When the plastic comes to us, we have to sort it first. Okay. So we have to sort it by color mm -hmm. and also by type. So as we were talking before, there are seven different types of plastic. So we have to separate them into the different types. Okay. So PET bottles, the, the clear plastic bottles, those are type one. Okay. Um, the bottle cap is actually a different type of plastic. Okay. So we need to separate them. So the bottle cap is type two or HDPE plastic. So that's what we're collecting here. But then we also have um, takeaway food containers, which are type five plastic or okay. PP. Um, but then there are other types as well. So which we don't actually accept at the moment because okay. um, they're often more difficult to recycle or they might release chemicals or smells uh -huh. when we melt the plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so we've decided to choose plastics which are easy to recycle um, and that don't actually conflict with an existing recycling market. Okay. Um, so that's why we take type 2 and type 5. So what are these recycled into? What, what, are they, um, what do you do with these? When you Show me the process. Yes, um, so this is our first machine that we use, which is our shredder machine. Okay. Um, so it uses a big old mo motor here, which is attached to a drive shaft, um, and it drives these teeth inside the machine here that actually grind up the plastic and turn it into small flakes. So also this machine, you said that um, this is from the precious plastic concept. They have a concept of how the machines can be built, right? Kind of like a blueprint. Yeah. And then you just have them manufactured in Thailand. What's the cost of something like this? So these machines, we get them um, produced for around uh, $1,500. $1,500. So around okay. 80,000 baht um, at, this, at this point. Okay. Um, so they can be made cheaper. Um, if you use scrap metal, use secondhand motors and things like that. But because we're producing these machines for communities, we want to make sure that we're giving them high quality products, high quality machines, which aren't just gonna break down immediately. This is our shredder machine, okay. which we just turn on here. So it literally is it's just simple as putting the caps in and then they get shredded in there. And out the bottom, you'll see that we get our flakes. Even the plastic bottles get shredded like this? Or not? Uh, yes, but not by us. Okay. So the plastic bottles, we'll often send them to another organization or maybe a bigger company as well, who can then recycle it on an industrial scale. Okay. Um, so we choose to do these caps just because it's a lot easier um, in terms of the melting process as well. So it's actually better for us to recycle this than the PET bottles as well. Okay. When the bottles, um, when the caps come, do they need to be cleaned first? How, how does the sanitization work? Yeah, so with recycling, it's really important that we have clean plastic. When we first started Precious Plastic Bangkok, 
we were taking very dirty plastic mm -hmm. from clongs. We did a lot of cleanups on beaches and we have to spend hours cleaning the plastic afterwards, often with small toothbrushes. <laughs> and that just takes a lot, a yeah. lot of time. So we try to move towards a system where we can intercept the plastic before it becomes dirty. Okay. That's why we set up our drop-off network as well, so that people, whenever they use plastic and generate plastic waste, instead of throwing it away into their normal bin, they can put it into a separate bin, and then that plastic is already clean, and then they can send that plastic to us, and as you see, it's all perfectly clean Where and ready to use. Where is located? So we have over 50 locations now, okay. all across Bangkok, all across Bangkok, that collect yeah. plastic for us. Like, are they in communities or where are they located usually? Usually cafes, restaurants, businesses, okay. they can all sign up. So if there are businesses out there that are interested in being part of this network, then they can get in contact with us mm -hmm. and then we can send them instructions about how they can be part of that network um, of drop-off centers. Yeah, so once we've got the, uh, the flakes, so this is just a small example showing what the flakes look like. That's now ready to be fed into our melting machines to actually start making products. Okay. So that's a really nice raw material. And this is actually something that we can sell or communities can sell already. So this is also, you said that, um, do you give these machines away as well? Or um, because people also make their own so that they can commercialize it at the same time. Is it both ways right now? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So people can use this technology for commercial gain. So there are businesses in Thailand that have set this up to operate as a business. Right. And so I think that's a really cool way that this project and this technology can be used. But also, um, as we're doing, we're working with communities. So we're donating these machines. And what are some products that you can show us today <coughs> that are made from recycled plastics? Yeah, so we have some of our products on display here um, that we produced. So this is all using a combination of different methods. Okay. So we have extrusion, which is this one here. So that's producing almost like spaghetti um, out of the plastic. And then we can use molds to then produce uh, new products. Um, we have our compression machine, which makes our, our, us these sheets of plastic. Um, and so we can make up to 45 centimeter squared. And this is from the caps as well, the yeah. different colors? Yeah, okay, so you exactly. Just yeah. Um, and so it allows together. us to be really creative um, with the color, color palette that we use um, and make really nice uh, shapes, colors, um, and combinations. Where are these products being sold after they're made? Um, are there any of the original products that are made here? Are you selling them as well? Yeah, so we, we sell them online okay. on, our, on our Facebook page um, and also through um, Ecotopia at Siam Discovery. Um, and then also through other shops all across Bangkok as well. And how do they benefit the planet? Well, I think these products, what they aim to do is to demonstrate to people that there is an alternative to just throwing away plastic right, waste. Right. This okay. plastic waste can actually be produced into new, exciting, creative uh, concepts um, that communities can get part of as well. Um, and what it's trying to do is raise this sort of awareness but also inspire people okay. that plastic waste doesn't necessarily need to be just trash. It can actually be an incredibly powerful, useful resource that can be turned into something and given new life. Um, so hopefully it helps to educate people, inform people about plastic waste um, and about single use generation in the first place as well. Do you have um, other products that you can show Yeah, us? absolutely. So we have this whole table. We've designed in collaboration with our communities. So this is a product that we've made with the Doi Tung community, for example. What um, is it? Is it for... Um... This is their logo. So this is a, like a little keychain ah, that they can okay. then have on bags and things like that. Um, we're also doing things with the Mercy Center as well in Klong Doi. So this is a little uh, neck, uh, necklace charm um, and also with the Banan Per community as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do with all of our community um, work is actually work with them engage in a consultation and see what products do they want to make which are unique to them mm -hmm. that speak to their sort of community identity. Um, so Ban Am Per being by the sea, they've chosen to go with very nice coasters mm -hmm. that speak to their seaside uh, connection. So I think that's a really nice way that we're building that community connection. Do you work with artists too? 
So yes, we, we work with artists a lot. Yeah. Um, so they help us both with the color combinations, with product designs. Um, and I think that that's something that will develop as well as we grow the project. So working both with plastic trash in its raw form, but also once we actually melt it as well. Okay. Um, so developing new concepts for products. So maybe laptop oh, holders oh, laptop holder. okay. um, and clocks and things like that as well. Um, so there are all sorts of different things that we can do with this technology. What else can be done? What can corporates do? What can governments do to assist, you know, so that it doesn't fall only on consumers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we've seen is that over the years, there has been this push to put the onus or the responsibility on the consumer mm -hmm. to engage in recycling. There's always these messages on packaging. Please don't forget to recycle right, me. Right. And that is putting the pressure on the consumer to be part of this. Mm -hmm. But really, we need the responsibility to lie with the companies who produce that plastic in the first place. So this is all about the concept of extended producer responsibility. Mm -hmm. What we see in Europe, for example, is you have waste collection points, bottle banks set up at supermarkets. So when people go and do their weekly shopping, they can take their plastic bottles back with them, recycle them, and or just reuse them. And so that's a really simple concept that Thailand hasn't got yet. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that companies need to develop, but it's also something that governments need yeah. to be pushing. Mm -hmm. So we need to see the Royal Thai government mm -hmm. supporting a, a very extensive extended producer responsibility law, which will push companies right. to develop these bottle banks mm -hmm. and ways for companies to actually bear the responsibility for the waste that they are helping to generate. Right, enforcement would be a very important solution to this. Now, for those watching at home um, who want to do, like, who want to help, whether do you have any tips on you know small things or big things they can do? Well, I think that with recycling and, and with re well, I think with reducing the amount of single-use plastic that we're generating, it's really important to take it step by step. Right. I think asking people to reduce the amount of single-use plastic that they're using immediately, just clicking their fingers and saying, okay, no more single-use plastic, that's not really possible. It's not achievable even for myself. I struggle to reduce single-use plastic. How long do you think it'll take before people can actually stop using single-use plastic? I think it requires input from all stakeholders. Yeah. So individuals, they can take small steps. So each week they can try a different type of single-use plastic and cut it out. Mm -hmm. So it's plastic bags, plastic bottles, um, and just see how you can incrementally increase the amount of plastic that you're reducing. Mm -hmm. But also, again, it's the companies need to be taking steps to reduce the amount of single-use plastic that they're generating. But it also needs to come from governments as well. So we need to have legislation which encourages people to reduce the amount of single-use plastic that they are um, producing or generating. What about in Thailand? We I don't noticed, have that law. Yeah, but we I noticed have, actually a lot of places are not using plastic bags yeah. anymore. Um, supermarkets, for example, right? So, yeah, supermarkets um, have put in place that they won't automatically offer them, but you can still get them. Right. And right. convenience stores um, just around the corner, there are some that still give out plastic bags almost autonomously. Mm -hmm. And that needs to change. We need to move away from that kind of thinking in terms of single-use plastic generation. It has to be an effort from every single person. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. All parties. Yeah. For, the, for people watching at home who want to send in their plastic or participate in the activities organized by Precious Plastics Bangkok, how can they do so? Yeah, so um, we're really keen for people to get involved. So they can come to our workspace. We have workshops that we do here, right here. Um, but also, if you want to send us your plastic, you can get in contact with our Facebook page. You can uh, get the address, all of our information there. We have all the information about what kinds of plastic we accept as well, available on our website and on our Facebook page. Uh, so please do get in touch if you're interested. We're also looking for communities as well that want to be a part of our movement. Um, so if you live in a community that's affected by plastic waste that you feel would benefit from our machines, mm -hmm. then we're really keen to get in, in contact with them um, so that we can bring our machines to your community um, and help you deal with this plastic waste as well. Dominique, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you.
And that's it for our show today. We broadcast every Friday at 11 p.m. on NBT2 HD and every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. on NBT World as well as live on our NBT World YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and comment on our Facebook page, Thailand Today Online. I'm Pra Chirakao-san. Swakika.